Is there shame in your game? Good morning, Disorderland. Check this one out. Absolutely no introduction. We are plunging into today's topic, which is shame. This is something I've been thinking about for a while. I don't view shame as an inherently bad thing, but I do think that in 2021, shame is mostly framed that way. For example, shame is used to humiliate people in public that you disagree with now. Shame is used as a sort of social justice punishment. Sometimes, or all too often, shame is used to rip people of their dignity. We know shame can lead to depression or worse. Shame can be heaped upon the individual or it can be lobbed upon an entire race or culture. I'm not sure how important it is to clear up the difference between shame and guilt for the sake of this video, but I'll do it just to be safe. Generally speaking, guilt works on the basis of feeling regret over an action, and shame is regretting some aspect of who you are as a person. There's a lot more to it, obviously, but for all intents and purposes, that should do for now. Man, this video is starting off depressing, but I promise it gets lighter from here on out. So after all is said and done, or at least after everything I've said so far, how can I argue that shame can be a good thing and how can we use it to our benefit? Well, first off, shame is a great motivator. Shame is the reason that we don't do all sorts of horrible things in public. That's because shame is a moral response or emotion. As Dr. Daniel Schneiser points out in a research study on shame, uh, and I'm quoting him here, the function of shame is to prevent us from damaging our social relationships or to motivate us to repair them. You see, shame lets us get a glimpse into how others see us. Without shame, we don't get to build societies and live together in groups of cooperating individuals. In other words, we don't get to where we are today. Shame promotes social fidelity. It is a key part of a civilized society. It helps shape our behaviors and keeps us roughly in line with one another while still giving us the freedom to be an individual. A good example is honesty. Dishonesty is looked down upon in society. We may get away with little white lies like, I never drink out of the carton, or no, that's not too many pillows for one bed, or this shirt is exactly like something I would have picked out. And it's up to each individual to decide where they draw the line. But the bigger the lies, well, society, neighbors, and friends keep us in check with those. And believe it or not, or like it or not, it's done with shame. So, at least from this reframing, we can see how shame can be used as a force for good. However, prolonged shame is terrible for us as humans. Shame can create feelings of being unworthy and unlovable. This is why I said at the beginning that it can lead to depression or even worse. There needs to be a way to conquer shame in a healthy way. And one such way is to view yourself as a work in progress. If you feel shame over an aspect of yourself, remind yourself that you are ever evolving and that you won't always be this way. And one uncomfortable truth about yourself does not mean that you're unworthy or unlovable, not at all. Therapy is such a fantastic way to treat shame. Many times you'll find out that what you're ashamed about isn't something you should feel shame over to begin with. Frequently, trauma can bring prolonged feelings of shame that linger and grow, and therapy is the perfect place to work those things out. We with OCPD are particularly susceptible to shame, for there can be many aspects to our behaviors that we feel helpless to. Our compulsions can lead us to do things that go against our better nature. So I'd like to challenge you to use shame as a force for change. I'll give you a personal example. I like clean counters, and I don't like using a paper towel more than once. Go figure. I go through, well, let's just say bounty isn't gonna go out of business anytime soon, but I feel ashamed because I know that what I'm doing isn't good for the environment. Same could be said for long showers. Take a closer look at your behaviors and look to see if there are behaviors that don't line up with your own principles. And maybe pick one or two and see if the feelings of shame can at least kickstart some change. Remember, if you fail, you're still a good person. I promise. Failure and are not synonymous 
and all of us are changing at different rates of speed, but you're a good person and you will get there in the end. So I'm kind of obsessed lately with my analytics and the percentage of viewers versus the percentage of subscribers is way off. I know you can do a lot better than that. So after decimating the like button today, you can just make one more click and you'll be subscribed and you'll be telling YouTube that this is the type of content that you like. And remember, you can now become a member of the channel. That button is next to the subscribe button that you just clicked. So uh, you can also make a donation if you want to highlight any comments that you leave down below. That's a new feature as well. And I still have the phone service going over at clarity.fm. Uh, that's probably not everything, but what I do know is that I'm still Daryl and this is still my life in debris. Uh, oh, and uh, send any questions you have to ronreactions at ocpd.org. I knew this was going to be too much to remember. Okay, so this is Raw Reactions. This is the awkward segment where I try and answer a question that you guys have sent in anonymously. And all of you are welcome to do that anytime you want. Uh, the email address will be on the screen, but it is, and it'll be in the description. Uh, but it is rawreactions at ocpd.org. Send in those questions and I will try to get to them in a future video. So for today, we have a random question here uh, from a subscriber. It says, I wonder, can you have OCPD but not be orderly in areas of your life you simply don't care for? I mean, I'm always overly correct. I'm perfectionistic to the point I rarely ever finish tasks, but I don't keep my house in order since I hate it and I know that I wouldn't thrive even if it was clean in order to, in order, clean and in order except the placement of furniture has to be perfect. The question goes on a little bit, but the, the main question was can you have OCPD and have a messy house? I think is what basically the question is and absolutely different traits of OCPD. You don't have to have all of them if you look in the DSM in order to qualify for OCPD. So there are OCPD uh, people that are hoarders um, and their houses I, I guarantee are not gonna be in order. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, this is a great question because I don't have to go on and on with it. Yes, you can have a messy house and have OCPD. Thank you very much. Is there shame in your game?